Yeah. Good morning, Dayeli. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? Cold, freezing. Oh, well, also, uh, São Paulo is also cold. Yeah, here in Curitiba, you can see how I'm dressing right there. Uh, as, as it usually happens in most of our homes in, in Latin America, we don't, we don't have central heating. And then when it gets cold, it gets cold outside, but it also gets cold inside. So I'm, I have several layers of clothing here because uh, yesterday, uh, yeah, yesterday, uh, Cesar Souza, uh, uh, Daeli's colleague in Sao Paulo, sent me uh, a, a picture. Uh, in which it showed the temperature in Curitiba, where I am, Maria, uh, and the temperature in Alaska. Uh, and the temperature here was much uh, colder than in Alaska. And then he said, yes, in Brazil, we do get cold weather. <laughs> Good morning, Rogério. Good morning, teacher. How are you today? Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're waiting for, for, for the, the other colleagues to join us. Uh, I think, uh, well, the Daieli was not with us in the previous um, event. Um, from now on, I, I hope that we have sort of a stable group uh, because, uh, of course, we want, to, we want to have this as if it was a regular class uh, in which uh, we can all build together on our knowledge about how to write papers, academic papers, in information systems, right? Uh, so the idea is that uh, over over time uh, we we can uh, I mean discuss. Uh, of course, uh, some some of you are students uh, and are willing to write their first uh, paper. Uh, we have Antonio is a, is is a professor. Daeli is a professor. So we have among us uh, also uh, professors who are here uh, because we all want to improve what we do. And at the same time, uh, I hope you can also share. Uh, with the colleagues, uh, the well, the success and the failures that we've had in our journey writing academic papers, right? Because for uh, those uh, who are um, starting, like Rogério is a a, a master student, uh, for those who are starting, uh, it may be a little disappointing when you send a paper to a conference and you get all these comments and then they reject your paper and and then you say, come on, I worked so hard and uh, how. Why, why are they rejecting my paper? Isn't it good? Well, maybe it's still not good enough at that stage. So we have to look at uh, conferences and uh, journals and, and the, the reviews that we get from, from conferences and, and journals. We should look at that as being uh, an opinion that someone is issuing on our paper that can help us improve it further, right? Uh, sometimes it's annoying. I have to admit, uh, nobody likes when others say that what we are doing is not good. Uh, and, and the first thing that we have to consider is, well, it's not good in their opinion. So we should uh, be strong enough to say, well, maybe what I have to do is to try and convince people that what I do is important, that what I do has its value. Sometimes it's just a matter that you're doing the right thing and the reviewers uh, do not understand it, right? Uh, it's, so it's a tough journey. Uh, many people uh, give up in the middle of the way and say, well, I, I probably do, uh, am not writing uh, good stuff, so this is why people are not interested. Maybe it's the opposite. It's just that we are all stuck to a, par uh, to a paradigm. Uh, we are all stuck with some ideas, and you're the one who's bringing the revolutionary ideas that will eventually change the field, that will eventually make us... Uh, uh, much, uh, well, let's say, uh, a, a stronger field because it, it incorporates these this different perspectives, but you have to be strong and insist uh, in your ideas. But at the same time, we have to do that, understanding that if there are people that are not convinced that our work is good enough, that means also that our work is still not good enough, right? Uh, that means that we may have the, the greater, greatest ideas, but we still have to express them in a way that we convince uh, our, our audience. So never think of the reviewers of an academic uh, paper uh, as enemies, right? As people that are trying to put you down. There will be some people that will be trying to put you down because, well, in life, you know, that there are the, the good people and that there are people that are, I don't know, it's not that they're bad people, but they're, they're people that maybe someone uh, didn't like their papers also, and then now they're just taking a revenge on you, right? So it's, it's all part of being humans, right? Uh, so there will be situations in which you will say, well, that reviewer 
uh, was not uh, did not contribute to my work. But we, may, uh, uh, also when we have papers rejected, and maybe uh, that's the case where reviewers probably give us better reviews. Uh, it is when they are rejecting our papers because if they're saying I, I didn't like your paper, they will have to explain why they didn't like it. Which is different to those that say I liked your paper, right? I liked your paper. I accepted your paper. It goes uh, beyond without further improvement, right? Because wh whenever someone says uh, that they liked what you do, there's a, a great chance that you're not going to ask why. Why did you like it? Because of course the author already likes their own work in general, right? I mean, it's our baby. It's uh, it's uh, we th we think that there is some value. Otherwise, we would not be writing. So usually, when someone when the reviewer says uh, says that he or she likes our work. We are happy with that and we don't ask this uh, following question that is much more important. Why did you like it? Right? Uh, and, and, and possibly because it's not so relevant. Because uh, if they say why they liked it, they, they're going to tell us about a lot of things that are part of our work. Good morning, Elena. Who else is there? Good morning, Marisa. And whoever is, has just arrived, uh, Flavio. Good morning. Uh, morning. morning. Uh, so, can you see that uh, if we have a, some, some, some paper that someone read and enjoyed and they say, I liked it, and even if you ask them, why did you like it? They will say, I liked you because I found that the objective was clearly stated. I liked because I thought that the way you worked with your methodology uh, helped achieve the results that you wanted. They're always going to tell you that they liked your paper because of something that is in the paper already. So. It's difficult for you to get a contribution. It's difficult for you to improve your work when people are talking about the things that you have already done right. In that sense, I say having, uh, let's say, rigorous uh, reviewers that refuse your paper and that did not like your paper gives you a better opportunity of improving your work because then they will, even, even if you don't ask, of course, we, we, we don't build that dialogue uh, with, uh, with uh, reviewers because they review, they send a review and we, it's, it's usually an, an anonymous process. So in general, uh, academia works, still works with this double blind review process in which whoever is reviewing doesn't know whose work they're reviewing and uh, uh, whoever has uh, their work reviewed doesn't uh, uh, know who is reviewing, right? So it's, it's double blind to try and avoid that we are either help, let's say, helping our friends or going against our enemies. Again, thinking that we are all humans and 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 that people do not uh, act in a noble way all the time. Although I I, I myself think that it, it is already time that we we have already matured academically in the world uh, to to go a step further and maybe even change this and not having blind reviews any longer. Having uh, reviews in which. The reviewers say who they are, they and they know who, who they're reviewing because I think that we can uh, uh, put things aside and and and, and let's say uh, uh, provide honest and, and good reviews uh, to to other people. And, and by the way, it's it's very unlikely that the reviewer doesn't like the the, the author, right? Many times they, we we don't even know the the person at the other end, right? And uh, maybe even in in those cases where we liked the person because we already have some, for example, if I were reviewing a paper that was written by one of you. And I knew that you had been put a lot of effort taking part in a in a seminar like this for a whole semester. Let's say I would uh, I, I would be be willing to to help because I say, well, it's someone that who's, who's trying to to improve their own work, right? Uh, even in that case, uh, uh, I think that we have as, as as academia we have matured enough for me to say to one of you, well, sorry, I, I mean. Uh, you still have to, to work further because of these and that problem. And by doing that, I still think that I'm contributing more to your work than if I simply say, yes, I liked it, right? Nobody wants to know why we liked something, but everyone wants to know why we didn't like. And, and, and I can assure you that whenever you have a, a reviewer that doesn't like a paper, that gives them much more work because they will have to tell you why they didn't like it. So they will have to, to rethink, uh, they'll, they'll probably have to reread the paper and, and, and take note of all the, all the details in which all the problems that disturbed them in the reading. Uh, so for, first thing, the first message here is never get annoyed by reviewers that don't like your work. Uh, I tend to think that uh, writing, I mean, writing is a communication process, right? We're trying to, when we write something, we expect someone to read it. 
writing is also a let's say uh, the tool of a despot the tool of a dictator the, the author wants when, when the author writes something that means that the author wants the reader to read and agree right uh, the author wants the reader to read whatever was written and uh, be convinced by those ideas in, in that way I say that we when we write we are sort of despots because we want the others to agree with us right notice writing is a a technique or it's a method of uh, proposing ideas that doesn't try in general it doesn't want to be very democratic or, or very democratic is not, not the word uh, it, it doesn't want to give the word back right you don't write something to hear back from from whoever read it the reader or at least traditionally the reader used to be passive the reader reads either accepts the ideas of the writer or even when the, 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 the reader doesn't agree with the author the reader has no voice do you agree with me? The, the reader cannot say, I don't agree with you. There's no room for that. So the author wants to be a despot in the way that the author wants to uh, throw his or her ideas on others and not hear back from them. Well, uh, of course, if we want to evolve with our um, uh, with, with, with any field of knowledge, we need discussion, right? No one of us uh, has uh, uh, an understanding of the world that is definitely better than everyone else, so that we can be the despots that want to, to tell the others our truth. So, uh, academic writing and, and, and the writing in conferences and, and, and in journals is an attempt to, 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 to start a debate. Right? So, after someone has a paper published, other authors are going to read, oh, sorry, other uh, researchers are going to read that, per that, that, that person's uh, paper. And then they will start agreeing or disagreeing with that. And how do we do that academically? By quoting, by citing some work that we read before in proposing our own work. So in general, uh, academic work, before we start um, presenting our own ideas, or let's say our own research, we usually review the research of others. Right. So this is why we usually have a session, uh, uh, some some part, a chapter of, uh, of our dissertation, of our thesis, of, of a paper in which we are reviewing the literature. We review the literature uh, not because, uh, well, sometimes we, we review the literature to show others, look, um, I know what others have done and, and, I, and I'm not starting my own work out of, out of the blue, right, without, I, I, I'm starting from where others have already uh, stopped. Uh, Newton had a, a beautiful st uh, statement with respect to that. Uh, uh, Newton, uh, in when, when doing some of his writing, he said he acknowledged I could only go that far. Well, these were not his uh, precise words, but uh, this is the idea. I could not. I, I could only go that far because I, I climbed on the shoulders of giants. Right? What Newton was saying was that he had done some literature review. Right? He had seen what other. Uh, researchers had done before, uh, he started developing his own theories, right? So, uh, uh, so there is, uh, I, I say that usually a writer is a despot and tries to set a, when you put a period, an end period in your work, you hope that nobody is going to question it, but that's not how it's going to happen in science, in, in science or in academia. When you're published, others will read what you wrote and then they will start agreeing and disagreeing with you by uh, developing their own work, which will either emphasize some of the results that you obtain with your work, or, or some of the like the ideas that you're, you propose with your work, and that will question other ideas, showing that they have different empirical evidence sometimes, right? Or, or sometimes it's empirical evidence. They say, look, my data shows something different to what uh, Alex was proposing in his paper, right? Sometimes it's empirical data. Sometimes it may be just argumentation. Uh, your uh, the way in which you are going to to question someone's um, results or statements or whatever may be just by simply reasoning, right? Um, and so there is, a, a, as Rogério is saying, uh, there is a, a some stimulation for a debate, even considering that our work is in the written form. Um, I believe that in the future we will find uh, different ways of uh, communicating our research. 
uh, because we have technology that allows us to do this in a faster way today. But we still do it, uh, um, well, the, the, the main uh, ways of doing that are still those that are traditionally accepted, basically writing uh, academic papers that can be reviewed, originally reviewed by what I called in, the, in our previous uh, meeting, the gatekeepers of, of academia, right? The, the conference chairs or the, the program chairs in a conference that will go through the papers that are submitted and first decide if the topic of uh, those papers are um, adherent uh, to, 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 to the conference. For example, if, if someone sends a paper to uh, ISLA, the Information Systems in Latin America conference, and the paper is uh, about, uh, I don't know, some uh, medical issue, we will say, this is not the, 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 the proper, the, this is not the right place for, for this, uh, this medical doctor to come in and present the research, right? We are, here we are all interested in information systems. So uh, the, the, the program chairs of a conference before, even before they send uh, papers to be reviewed by, by, by the reviewers, they already check if those papers that were submitted to the conference, if they match the, the intents of that conference, if they, if they relate to the topic that, that is planned for that conference. And uh, if the topic uh, is, 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 is not related, they will probably refuse. So they're the first gatekeepers. They will uh, deny that submission, they will say, sorry, we won't even review this paper because the title already tells me that it is about something that we do not want to discuss in this academic community here. So the first thing that we have to think when we are planning uh, uh, to submit a paper to a conference or to a journal, to a, a periodical, is, is that uh, journal or that conference interested in the topic that I, that I plan to, to to develop in my in my research, because if not, you will not even be reviewed. Uh, I mean, they will not even read your paper, or if they do, it, it's going to be that that side uh, reading. The, it, it's going to be read very quickly, uh, just to make sure that it definitely doesn't belong there, right? And and that's going to be done either by the conference uh, program chair, or if it's a conference, or by uh, the I, I don't know uh, the the senior editor in charge of. Uh, of a journal or of a at least a journal issue, right? They will not read. With, uh, they, they will not put a lot of attention because they will say this already. Well, I read the title, I read the abstract, and it already shows that it doesn't relate to, to things that we deal with here in this conference or in this journal. Uh, well, if you were, I mean, at least if you have done your homework and decided that that journal, that, that that conference or that journal is a journal that is used to publish uh, work that is similar to what you're you're thinking about, then uh, then the second challenge is going to be the reviewers, right? And uh, because then the, the 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 program chair, in the case of the conference, or the the senior editor is going to say, okay, it seems that this paper uh, deserves some uh, more detailed attention. So now I will send it to reviewers. The reviewers are going to be the second layer of gate uh, gatekeepers. Remember last last time uh, last week I told you it's almost like you want to crash into a party. Right? Uh, well, not crash into. You get want to get into a party, but there will be those guys at the entrance to check if you were in the list of invited people, uh, or if you were not invited. Uh, at least uh, the, the, those gatekeepers may even decide. Well, this guy has not been invited, but he's he or she is someone important in our uh, here. Yeah, we'll let them in. Uh, but there, there are gatekeepers there that will prevent those that were not invited and that are not wanted to be there. So the first thing you have to do is make sure that. You are in the, in the invitation list, or that, that at least if you're not in the invitation list, that people will say, "Well, look, but I, I want to pay a little more attention to to what these these guys do, right?" So, our task for today uh, in this uh, second topic of our research seminars here uh, is to discuss a little bit about what uh, what should be our research questions in information systems, so that we have a chance of passing the program chair in a conference or the senior editor that will only look at the title of our paper uh, and maybe read the abstract, just a few lines, and decide, okay, being the first gatekeeper here, I will say, I will let this guy go on to the, the hall where uh, he or she will have to explain better why they should be in the party, right? Uh, so what are research questions that interest uh, the field of information systems? 
and I have to tell you this is still a challenge because the information systems field is still being uh, how they say it's still maturing right the information systems field is a field where we have different tribes uh, and I think we we discussed that briefly uh, in our uh, in our previous meeting when I said well there are people that get into information systems coming from a computer science uh, department or, or background right of course if you if you studied in, in, a, in a computer science school uh, that will affect the way you look at technology at least compared to someone who studied uh, information systems from a, a sociology perspective right maybe someone uh, that comes from a computer uh, uh, science school and I know that many of you have a computer science background when we have a computer science background we even think we may even think what what would sociologists have to do with information systems this, this is clearly a computer a computer related uh, discipline why would others care or even want to get into our party right well I can tell you that there is still a, a, another tribe that is as, as at least as large as the crowd of computer scientists interested in information systems it's the business people or, or people who studied business in a in a graduate school uh, and the reason for that is that the technology that used to be generated by the the computer scientists and other engineers has been affecting so severely our organizations over the years that uh, it's impossible for uh, business well people who study business or who study administration in general it's impossible for them not to care about they say computers are too important uh, for business for us to keep only the the technology guys there dealing with it they have a different perspective than ours they computer scientists want to have faster processors uh, or faster algorithms to do something faster but they have no clue that that's the, the perspective of the business people they have no clue of what what that technology is going to be used uh, afterwards in an organization right uh, and, and 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 so we have at least these two large groups uh, of people uh, people who have a background in engineering and computer science and people who have a background in business that are very interested in information systems so in, in information systems many say that it's a it's an area uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an area in the middle, right? Uh, uh, it's in the, an area in the middle between the engineers and the business people. But it's also uh, an area in the middle of engineers, business people, and maybe now our society, because as we were discussing uh, also uh, in our previous uh, um, meeting, uh, we have a lot of... Uh, uh, well, our technologies affect a lot the way we live in society. So there's, uh, well, th th there would be a, a, a lot of reasons for sociologists, psychologists, uh, and even philosophers to be interested in what we're doing with these technologies, right? I can I, I, I can tell you that sociologists and, and psychologists have been dealing a lot with, uh, or at least indirectly with information systems through the, the business uh, researchers, because uh, business, again, as an applied area, an applied science, uh depends on other other academic uh, areas uh, from which it brings theory into or uh, let's say not only theories they, they bring their uh, I usually call their the lenses they put in front of their eyes to see reality right uh, business uh, uh, researchers tend to, to to look at theories that are developed in other uh, social sciences to try and understand how we relate to technology all of that relates to to information systems uh, and if we want to go uh, uh, beyond those gatekeepers we have to know what they are what they think the field is we do have conferences in information systems conferences and journals that are run by um, by let's say uh, uh, a sub community sub community uh, that is more uh, let's say computer science oriented we do have other conferences and uh, and journals that are more, let's say, the gatekeepers uh, are in business departments. I can tell you that if you come from a more 
uh, hard sciences uh, related fields, you will have probably a better chance of being published in a conference or a journal that is somewhat related to, to, to computer science, right? And if you come from, from the sociology field or, or uh, psychology or even business, there is a better chance for you to talk to those people that get together in, the, in business or uh, in, in conferences or journals that are organized by business people. But is that what we want? I mean, for people to, to build smaller uh, mini communities uh, that instead of being in the middle and allowing everyone to understand each other, uh, look for, you know, for their own gang or for their own, let's say, uh, tribe uh, and, uh, and refuse to talk to the, to, to, to the other field. Well, that's precisely what information systems should not try to be. Because again, we are in the middle uh, and we are, we, 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 we claim that we could be a, let's say, a discipline or a, a field that integrates knowledge from other fields and, and, that, and that bridges this, this other fields as well so that um, that knowledge can flow from one side to the other. Right? Does that make sense to you? Uh, again, I know that half of you come from business schools, half of you come, well, uh, well pr probably almost half come from business schools, almost half come from, uh, let's say, more computer science uh, schools originally. And I'm sure that there will be people here in, in, in this group that come from other areas that are also interested in the way technology, I will use a word here that will probably provide already some biased, uh, let's say, perception of it, but, but how technology intrudes into human life, right? I say it's a little biased because I can tell you that whoever comes from, from a computer science perspective will say, come on, intrudes, that, that means that we, you're saying that we are doing a harm, we, we're bringing a problem to people, we're, we're bringing solutions, right? Whoever comes from a, a more technological, uh, the, the, the guys who, who build or develop technologies tend to be the ones that think that they're bringing solutions, not that they're bringing problems. And whoever comes from a more uh, social, has a more social perspective, may be interested in saying, okay, I, I, I understand that that's your intent, but when I look at reality through my lenses, I see different things. I, sometimes I see more technology and less humanity, for example, right? Recently we had here in Brazil, this uh, Symposio Brasileiro de Sistemas de Informação, the Information Systems uh, Brazilian uh, Symposium, in which we had as the theme for this year, uh, technology for a more humane world. Why was that the, the, the theme for the, the, the conference? Because we wanted to challenge or, or to make people reflect about, is it what we're doing with respect to developing new technologies? Is it really taking us uh, a step further into making us more humane, making us more humane, making us more, well, uh, humane is, is not exactly, uh, uh, more human uh, in, in the sense of being closer to the values that we as a society claim that uh, a, a human society could have or should have, or is it, it, it taking us apart from that? I don't know, well, people question that. that we, we, of course, the theme of a conference uh, is, again, is a way of the gatekeepers telling people if you write about this topic, there's a great chance that we will like it because we want to discuss that. It doesn't mean that it's the only thing to be discussed in, the, in a conference, right? It's just a suggestion of uh, direction. Uh, and of course, uh, most of us researchers in the, the, in the field in general are not going to change the research we do simply to adapt to the theme of a conference. We may, we may shift a bit our, the way we, we present uh, our paper so that it matches a little better, right? Uh, but we, we usually, we, 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 we're not going to say, oh, okay, so if, so if this conference has this as a theme, now this year I will study that. We, we don't change our, our, the object of our studies or even the, 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 the things that motivate us simply because of a conference. But the idea of the conference is to make people think also, all right, but that's, that's something that I should be concerned about, right? Uh, I can tell you that probably the, the only reason why the theme was that, was that because this year, um, the uh, well, I, I was part of the, 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 the conference uh, uh, team, the people that were organizing the conference, and I said, and, and this is because of my perspective. Again, I, uh, I am, I, as, as a, a graduate student, I was in a business school, right? I, I went to a business school for, for, for my master's and my doctoral degree, so the my, my let's say, my researchers' lenses tend to have a more critical perspective of technology 
in spite of me being an engineer originally, right? I'm an electronics engineer, but let's say that the, the, the path that I took during my research term was more, let's say, related to what people were studying in the, in, in the business um, schools. Uh, and that was a challenge. Well, the, the uh, Sociedade Brasileira de Computação, the, the, the Brazilian uh, Computing Society, uh, aims or uh, well, had this uh, this uh, idea uh, that information systems has to be closer to other areas, and this was why they invited me to to be the chair of the conference uh, this last year, because they thought, well, let's bring someone who's not part of our let's say who's who's not directly involved with our conferences in which we look to information systems from our perspective, let's bring different, a fresh air, a fresh, uh, you know, fresh perspective in the way that it's not that it's a better perspective, it's different. let's bring different perspectives to this, right? The same way as uh, uh, we in, in the business uh, schools now think that we have to start inviting um, philosophers, for example, to, to discuss information systems because we have to start challenging not our means, not the, the, the things that, not, not our processes, but our ends, where do we want to go with uh, these uh, technologies that we are studying, right? And philosophers tend to have this uh, uh, in their DNA uh, to always think, okay, we're doing things, but why? They, 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 the philosophers are always questioning the whys. Why are we doing this? Right? And I believe, uh, well, not only me, but may, many people these days believe that we, we have to question uh, where we want to go before we decide how we are going to get there, right? We, we, we became very good with our technologies, but technologies are means. Technologies help us get somewhere. If we don't know where we want to go, our technologies will take us somewhere, right? But uh, we don't know exactly where that's going to be. All right. Uh, so this was, uh, uh, again, uh, for, for you to understand why we chose uh, to discuss uh, the main research questions, because there will be questions that probably uh, uh, the gatekeepers in the area, uh, trying to, to, to make sense of this area or the, this discipline, they're going to say, well, this is computer science. This is not information systems. Or this is marketing. This is also not uh, uh, information systems. This is operations management, right? Uh, of course, information systems may have a lot to do with uh, the way companies uh, develop their logistics these days because, uh, of course, uh, our, our computer technology can bring customers much closer, the end customers much closer to, to, to companies and, and, and may allow companies to, to, let's say, to support the needs of individual customers in a way that was impossible for most of the industrial revolution. Uh, it's still an operations management problem, is an operations management problem. Uh, it will uh, interest uh, production engineers or even business uh, uh, managers of, 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 of an, an industrial or supply chain uh, plant or whatever, but it's not necessarily a matter of information systems, right? So we have to gouge, we have to calibrate uh, what's our, the, the, what we're going to do research on to make sure that the research that we're doing is in information systems. So it has to try and bridge different areas. It has to try to be at the same time applied in the sense that it will solve uh, people's problems uh, in, 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 the, in the field, but it, it, but it shouldn't be applied computing. It's more than applied computing, right? Uh, it's, or, or it's not just applied computing. So it has to be applied, but at the same time, it has to, uh, um, to, 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 to get uh, uh, knowledge from, from, other, from several other fields and, and, and bring them uh, to this understanding of technology in our society. Uh, and then I thought, well, and this is why we suggested you to have a look at this uh, um, computing curricula uh, suggestions from the Association of Information Systems and the Association for Computer Machinery. They're the two, two large associa uh, academic associations, so they are probably are familiar with these two associations. Uh, they are they, they they run some of our main conferences in, in the in the field of information systems. Uh, the, uh, the Association for, for Computer Machinery is an older uh, association. It tends to be more computer science. The Association for, for Information Systems is uh, younger. Um, 
it's probably, it's probably some 30, 35 years old, or maybe a little more than that, 40 years old. Uh, uh, but it's, it's, it's definitely uh, younger than, than the Association for Computer Machinery, and it's more focused on information systems specifically. And what these guys were concerned about was that, and, 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 and here, they, they're not concerned about research with, the, with this document. They're concerned about what information systems is. In fact, they're concerned about what are the boundaries between the different areas or different, different fields of computing, right? Uh, this is a, this is a, a, a huge debate. Uh, even if, I mean, most of us, th those of us here who are not professors right now, uh, probably or many of us are probably intend to be professors or, or have some some connection with education, uh, and we want to know. Uh, okay, we are we are forming students, undergraduate students. We're forming them, and we're giving them a degree. What is the degree that we're giving them? Because the name of the degree already tells them. Um, uh, well, well, should should tell even the, the market should tell the, the society uh, how we prepare that person to become a professional. Right? Is there a difference between a and, and let me pull this down here so that you you can see? Is there a difference between a computer engineer, a computer scientist, someone who takes a, 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 a an undergraduate program in cybersecurity in information systems? in information technology, in software engineering. And notice that now, now they even include with data science, but there are already universities in Latin America and elsewhere that already have undergraduate programs in data science. So there are, there, there are the students are already graduating in data science. All right, that's the name of, that, that's the name that the, the badge that will be there. And when people ask those graduates from those different uh, programs here, they will, will ask, what do you do? And they will say, well, I am a computer engineer or I'm a, a, a computer scientist. One thing that uh, those that are graduates in information systems, they, they keep complaining. Uh, well, I teach in an undergraduate uh, program in, in information systems. And they say, the computer engineers can say they're engineers. The computer scientists, well, they're not really scientists in the way that, uh, the, 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 but they studied, uh, they could be called uh, computer scientists. What are we, what, what is our designation? Uh, and I say, well, you're a bachelor in information systems. We don't have a name for that. And, and they say, isn't that unfair? I think it is. It, it would be good if, if uh, whoever is a bachelor in information systems uh, could, uh, for example, have a word like, I am a, um, a, a, a systematizer. I can't even, it's because they're not just uh, uh, system analysts. As that, that was a name, actually, that many schools had in the past, right? They, 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 they they had uh, a program in in, in uh, systems analysis, right? But it's unfair. But at the same time, I say, well, this is uh, ha this happens uh, for reasons. Uh, information systems is a field that that, that uh, was originated after uh, computer science, right? And computer engineering, although it's young, it's a younger field. At least I I, I think it is younger than than uh, information systems. Computer engineering borrowed the engineering uh, name from the engineering profession that was already there, right? We had civil engineers, we had electrical engineers, mechanical engineers. It was easy to simply uh, uh, coin uh, uh, or, or uh, create this term and say, you're a computer engineer, right? Information systems, we still don't have a term, and I don't know if we'll if we, if we ever have, to say, you know, with one word saying what they are. Uh, the same problem have people that are, let's say, that graduate in, in information technology. What are they? Technologists? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, but it's a, it's a younger, let's say, a younger field, a younger profession. Uh, and, and we were not able, at least until now, to uh, create a term that is at least a, a term that is used by different uh, people, by, by, by those in the, in the markets, by by society, something that the kids can tell their parents, this is my degree is in, uh, I am whatever, right? We don't have that. Uh, and notice again, so the software engineering. I mean, someone who has a, a, a software engineering degree will probably claim that they're engineers, right? It's part of their the name. It's easy to, to, to claim that they're engineers, but uh, are they engineers the same way as a mechanical engineer or an electrical engineer or a civil engineer is? I don't know. Uh, the thing here is, this is evolving fast, uh, and and I believe 
that uh, we we do not even I mean uh, I'm not sure if we will ever have a, a, a very very good way of, of making sure that each of these professions is in a different box right that, that we can separate them uh, easily I'm not sure if that will ever happen um, at least not for undergrads, right? I think that there, there will be people that will have a degree in information systems and will actually, because of the things that interested him or her, uh, actually will be more like a computer engineer. In fact, I have many students like those. They, they're, they're, they're in an, uh, an information systems program, but the thing that they like the most is to program uh, Arduino, right? So they're, they're actually, they're going to be computer engineers in, 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 their, in what they do because they, what they're doing is a lot of automation, a lot of, uh, they, they, they like working with robots, uh, and they, and, and, but, but they're, 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 they will be graduates in information systems. So this, what this document here tries to do, and of course it's a 200 and, how many, 205 pages, I, I, I did not expect that you read the whole thing, uh, but at the same time I hope that you at least browsed for the word information systems there to see how what what differences they are trying to make among these different uh, courses here or these, these different uh, programs uh, because this is a challenge we have in forming new generations of professionals but this is also a challenge that we have in defining uh, well what we what we want to teach our students is possibly also what we should be researching right uh, I, I have always thought when when my when I had to, 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 to explain to someone why do we do research in in universities and not only in research institutes? Why did we get this burden of besides teaching new generations of students, also developing research or creating new knowledge? Why did we bring this uh, uh, burden to universities? Right, because it's a burden, right? Uh, we have a, it's it's a, it's a second. Let's say it's 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 a different activity. One one of them is teaching students about things that we already know, and the other is researching uh, new topics and and progressing with the or, or, or with the boundaries of knowledge and, and trying to go beyond what a previous generation uh, of researchers knew. But why is that done in universities and not in a separate uh, let's say j just in research institutes? My understanding is that we do that because when we are researching and trying to go beyond, uh, we are also, at least we are keeping updates. We're seeing we, what others are doing. We are getting better informed about uh, where, let's say, our field is going. So information systems tended to be something different 30 years ago than it is now. So what, how, how can I keep up, uh, up to date to what the field is? Well, by doing research, by and by doing research uh, means by reviewing the works of others, uh, by proposing our own ideas. But it's, it is an extra burden, uh, and mainly in Latin America, where we are already, many of us uh, already have very, very high teaching loads. So you already have many hours in class teaching, and universities still expect you to do, to develop uh, new research. But I, I, I claim that the, the uh, you know, it's, it's not for, for the, the, the reason for that is not uh, necessarily that we, we believe that uh, the universities are the place to, you know, to create the, the knowledge of the future. I think we do create the knowledge of the future in fields where others don't want to put money. And then, of course, uh, if, 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 if others don't put money, if companies don't put money into, into something, that's not going to be done, right? So in, in universities, that there is that possibility. So there are fields that expand because universities provide professors with some room for developing new ideas and in other areas. And in fact, I, I even think that in, in for example, in, in computer engineering, I think that it's very difficult for us to propose uh, something new uh, in, in, in universities. We are in general looking to what, what companies have done because they have millions of millions and billions of dollars to spend in their, their research labs. And we have to do research when we we ha when we have free time, right? When we are not uh, teaching our students, so there are areas that are more difficult for us to, to, let's say to 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 do research. But still, even in in areas where the the industry puts a lot of money into research and the research that we do in universities, trying to catch up with whatever is is being done 
uh, in, 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 let's say in, in the market, uh, research still allows us to keep somehow updates, up, up to date and, and, and somehow knowing what, uh, the, what is important to, to our field at, at whatever moment. Otherwise, uh, a professor, you know, 30 years into his or her career would be completely obsolete. Right? And that's usually not what happens. In fact, we become even more knowledgeable in academia as time progresses because we keep studying during our whole life while many times in other, um, let's say, even, even, even in, 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 in private organizations, many times people uh, tend to be very uh, narrowly focused on, 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 on what they're doing at the right uh, time. Um, so I don't know how you feel about uh, uh, these differences in, in these fields that I'm showing here. Uh, I know that, for example, I remember that once I was talking to Donna, I, I think Donna is there somewhere. I've, I've seen her earlier. She's not showing my screen only because I think she's, she doesn't, she doesn't have uh, her camera on or maybe, or, but anyway, uh, I was uh, talking to Donna, this, uh, uh, she's, she's um, a colleague from, from Panama. Uh, and she was telling me that many schools in, in her country, and well, many of you are from Panama, so you, you can, they prefer to give people, even if they're studying information systems or whatever they're studying, they will end up having a degree in engineering. Uh, can, can anyone tell me if, 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 that's, uh, if that's how you feel, like that, that schools tend to give, uh, or, or to, to give a, a diploma or a title in engineering simply because that sells better? Do you have, Antonio, do you have that feeling? Does this happen there? Mike. Oh, 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 and Donna, Donna, Donna was there, see? <laughs> I'm here, I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> I don't think if uh, uh, Antonio's mic is working, is it? But anyway, Donna, maybe, maybe you can start. Well, 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 I think it, it was, uh, yeah, yeah, I was referring to you because I remember you said, yeah, people like to be called engineers. Oof, that's, that's an issue. Um, sometimes in admission, mm -hmm. the kids go wild because they think that if they're not studying uh, informatic engineering, they're, they're not a person or a profession. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, have, we have other options uh, like um, um, e-commerce and, and some of them tend to want to, even though they don't have the basics, mm -hmm. they want to be an engineer. Mm -hmm. and, and you know the, the reason... Uh, I think uh, yeah. Nelson, Nelson is from here also. Uh -huh. He actually is the admission, um, uh, head of admission in the faculty. And um, that's one of the issues, you know, you have to try to make the kids understand not, it's not necessary. Not everyone has to be an engineer. Mm -hmm. And this is something cultural. Uh, our, our cultures in Latin America, uh, they put a lot of emphasis on, on, on the kids becoming either an engineer, a medical doctor, or a lawyer. At least here in Brazil, it's like that. Parents, when, when the, their kids say, I want to be a medical engineer, uh, sorry, a, a medical doctor, an engineer, or a lawyer, the parents get relieved because they say, okay, so, so my, 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 my kid, my, my kid is going to survive the, let's say the wild uh, jungle of life because traditionally those were uh, professions that uh, gave people uh, better opportunities. Uh, it's probably not uh, like that any longer. I mean, we, and I'm, I'm, uh, I don't have any research on, on, on that, but uh, I hear about a lot of medical doctors that have, find it very difficult uh, to progress in their career simply because there are parts of the country here in Brazil, for example, where there are too many medical doctors. And then there are, and of course, they, they don't want to, to move to other areas uh, where maybe, uh, although they lack doctors, uh, the, the areas are less attractive in other, in other senses. Uh, engineers, I mean, I, I mean, we have had this pressure of, um, you know, even including the, the the word engineering in programs that are not necessarily engineering or, or at least not, are not, do not relate to what an engineer uh, used to be in the past. So that may fool the market for a little while, but uh, it's not going to, to be what will make a difference. And I usually tell, for example, my bachelors, the, 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 the students who are in information systems, uh, who have this feeling sometimes, and, and, and in, in my university here, we have an undergraduate program in information systems and another, another undergraduate program in computer engineering. And then the, the students in information systems claim, or they have this feeling that they are the the the, the ugly duckling, the the the, the, the little 
uh, ugly. Do you know that story though about the the, the the ugly duck, the which was the swan that was, uh, yeah, uh, 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 it, it was the the, the kids of a, a swan that that was adopted by a duck mother, and the the swan was ugly when when a little kid compared to the other ducklings, and 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 and, and then it turned out to be a, a swan that is a usually considered a, a more beautiful bird afterwards. I keep telling my information system students. Uh, the undergrads, of course, the undergrads, they do not want to be researchers. If they want to be professors and researchers, I'll say, oh, sorry, uh, tough luck, you know, uh, you, you know, being a professor. Well, it gives us a lot of uh, freedom uh, in, in terms of, uh, and I even think mind freedom of doing what we think that is right. But uh, I, I, I tell them, I'm sorry, you're going to be a poor man uh, or a poor woman. But for those who are taking informa information systems, I say, even if your colleagues there in the engineering uh, program think that you are, let's say, second class students because you do not study the same level of math that they do or whatever, uh, never allow them to treat, uh, to treat you badly because you are going to be their bosses. Right? And I, I, I truly believe that if we, if we are able to uh, form, uh, to, 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 to educate good information systems professionals, they are going to be the bosses. And the, the reason for that is simply because they have a broader perspective uh, of the way computer, uh, I'll call it computer gadgets, right? Or computer technology is going to be used in organizations and in our society. Having a better understanding of how technology is going to be used, it means that they can uh, ask themselves better questions formulate better questions for the companies for which they work and that will of course make the leaders of those companies look at them and say well these guys think better let's have them to be the the leaders here while the the the, the engineers stand and, and i can I, I can talk about that without getting into any argument with other engineers that may be in the, in the group here because i am myself an engineer as well uh, and uh, engineers are educated to be problem solvers, not problem formulators, right? An engineer needs someone to tell them, I have this problem, can you solve it? And then the engineer is going to be to, to go there and say, sure, I can solve it. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and the engineer will plan all the process to solve the problem, but the engineer needs a problem to be solved. Uh, uh, our, our society needs uh, not necessarily a, a problem solvers any longer. Engineers were very important during, and this is again my perspective here, right? It's not uh, uh, not not anything academic. It's just my perception of of the world. Uh, we are a society of engineers. In general, we are all problem solvers because it's in our DNA. It's 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 in the DNA of uh, mankind. Uh, in fact, what made us different from other uh, monkeys, uh, calling ourselves uh, monkeys here. Um, what makes us different from, from other monkeys is that we had that uh, desire to solve problems. So we see a problem, we try to solve it. Sometimes we're successful, and then after we've solved that problem, we put the, the let's say, our society a step higher, and we, we, we made our, our society much more sophisticated than the societies of chimpanzees or gorillas or any of our, our cousins, uh, simply because when we solve a problem using our engineering skills, we learn from that, and from then on, we well, that problem has already solved. We are trying to solve other problems, but we are problem solvers, uh, and that, that that has helped a lot as, uh, for, for us to get to where we, we got. But I have the the, the, the feeling that we that the people that are alive today are probably the first generations of people that should be questioning if uh, we we need to keep being problem solvers, or if we, we should become better. Uh, problem generators, or if, if we should become better at generating the, the, the important questions for us. And the reason for that is that uh, I think what, what, until my parents, uh, of course, except uh, for situations where we had wars and things that made uh, life miserable, but uh, since uh, prehistory, each generation could tell their kids and be proud of that, I am delivering uh, to you a better world than I got from my parents. Simply because we were solving some problems and those problems that were already solved gave people a better quality of life, right? Again, taking out the situations of war, disease, but 
the natural evolution was being problem solvers, we were building a better world. We keep being problem solvers now, but we're solving problems that we don't question if they, they, they are our problems any longer. Uh, so we are, we are all very enthusiastic about, um, I don't know, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, right? They're problems that we are solving and we're solving fast. Whose problem is that? Is that the problem of uh, a human? Uh, I'm just quite, I don't know, right? Uh, is that a problem of humans? Or is that a problem of uh, uh, whatever entity wants to make humans irrelevant? Because after we have solved those problems, what will be left for humans? That's, that's for example, one of those philosophical questions. I'm not I'm far from being a philosopher, but that's one of the things that disturbs me a bit. If we, if we solve all you know, those situations in which humans were not only necessary, but they felt relevant or they felt important or they felt a reason for them to, to for, for their existence, if we can put our machines to do all of that, what will become of us? So that kind of question, I think it's, I think that this is also an information systems question to some degree, right? Uh, of course, it's a very philosophical question, but I think it's something we should include, at least when we are developing research and we're so enthusiastic about big data, for example. Right? Why are we so, uh, so enthusiastic about big data? Simply because we can, right? We have the technology that allows us to deal with big data. But uh, wouldn't it be a, a good information systems question also uh, uh, to, to ask, do we need big data? Have we already been able to deal with the small data that we had? Or we just want to have big data now because we have computers to crunch those big data and transform them in, in big information that will lead to, uh, lead to big decision making by, um, I don't know, some sort of automated uh, artificial intelligence. Right? So this is why I think that we, we, we will, in the future, at least in research, we'll have to bring uh, uh, more philosophy into information systems. We'll have to bring more human, uh, we have to be more humane in thinking about information systems because information systems is there in the middle of the way between the technology and, well, the uses or the, the uses we make of technology or the, the uses technology makes of us because that is also happening, right? We, we all feel that we are being used by, by our technology. So I, I don't believe that anyone thinks that uh, we should be developing technology to use human beings. Right? It doesn't seem very reasonable, at least from the from the human's perspective. Maybe from someone else's perspective, maybe, but but not from our our perspective. So isn't that something that we should be studying? Okay. Uh, right. This document here has uh, again uh, the idea to bring uh, this 205 page document here was to try and set the boundaries of information systems from these other areas, uh, and I think uh, there are some parts of it that need. Uh, more attention from us. Let me go here straight to page 31 and see how will this look. Oh, sorry. Here we are. This oh, sorry. Just a second. It's, it's a little sensible here. And let me see if I just go. No, I'm done. Page 31. Try to do this. This drawing a little to the top here. Can you see that drawing? Okay. Uh, this is uh, again the, the those two organizations, the Association for Information Systems and the Association for Computer Machinery, trying to make uh, some sense of all those professions that already exist and relate to to computing. Right. Um, you will see here. That some of some of uh, the, the professions are here are here in these uh, boxes, right? Uh, you see that s some of them are more relate more to the computer computing foundations that are the ones that are lower here in this in this diagram. There are some of them that are more related to the technology, and when we're talking about technology, the technology is uh, applications is, is something more applied already. So we have some of them, some of our. Dis disciplines that are here. And notice I'm not talking about research disciplines necessarily. I'm talking about uh, professional disciplines, uh, which end up being what we, we, we research afterwards. And then there are some, uh, uh, let's say, some um, of the profession that will be more related to specific domain activities, domain activities that are enabled by computing. And notice that here, for example, we have the 
this is uh, uh, computer security here, um, uh, cyber security, right? Cyber security is an area that is, it's interesting because it's based on computing, but the domain activity is security. It's trying to keep keep all that information that the computing generated, now keeping it safe from uh, whoever may, 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 may cause a problem there. Uh, and we have also here information systems. Note, note that information systems is uh, related to a domain activity that is probably business and, and, society, and, and living in society. Yeah? Uh, it's more... And then we have here, let's say, in the if, if we thought of this as being an axe, a vertical ax, a, a axis, and a, a horizontal axis here, in the in the x axis, we, we have harder more to the left, softer in the middle, and organizational needs more to the right. So it's easy for us to notice that information systems is more related to organizational needs than, than having concerns with the hardware itself. Uh, and it's very domain uh, related, uh, the domain of uh, business. Uh, the same happens here with data science. That is also, I mean, whoever studies data science, studies data science to try and solve a problem or problems that relates to organizations or, or to society. Uh, so th those fields are, are closer here. Uh, if you think, for example, here of computer engineering, computer engineering is very hardware related. Uh, and uh, it's more like, uh, well, it, it is very based on foundations of the, the foundations of computing here. So our computer engineers will have to understand a lot about how a diode uh, or a transistor works and, and, and even, even understand how maybe some of the, the physics of uh, silicon, silicon to, to do that and whatever. So there's some computing foundations here, but there is also some already some level of uh, technology. So notice that they show here that the computer, computer engineering is, is in, in, in white, in light blue. Then we have uh, uh, um, well, uh, information systems, uh, it is more like this that is in magenta here. Uh, I would say that probably data science is the green one. Uh, if that, I'm not sure if their intention was to relate the, the boxes themselves with the professions here, but, but it seems that it goes a little like that. And we see that some, so uh, uh, we see that they try to separate a little bit uh, where each one of those professions would uh, show. Um, I don't know how, how good it will show in your screen. And again, the, the, the way I, I do here, uh, working with um, a virtual camera, sometimes maybe when, when Google Meet um, works with Google cameras, uh, it, it doesn't, prov it doesn't use the same level of resolution as if I were sharing a screen with you, sorry, sharing a, a document with you, right? So one, I, I think I've already told you uh, last week about that, but maybe you can go to, to to, conf to the configuration um, um, of your Google Meet uh, 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 settings there, in those three dots. Uh, I think it's there. Uh, no, no, no. There's some, well, wait, anyway, you can go to your configuration and, and configure, or, or maybe it's the configuration of the, the camera. No, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, there, there's some setting in the configuration there that you can improve the resolution so that you see my, my screen better, even if I'm using this, uh, this method that I uh, that I'm using here, uh, but if if still if you don't see it well, it's on page forty of that document that is shared with you. Uh, where is it? Uh, here. This is this is the document, right? If you it's on page forty, uh, where it will show again the boundaries of those um, different um, professions. By by the way, I included here just this morning, uh, so you, you definitely did not have time to watch it yet. Uh, but I included uh, an interview that we did in this research seminars last year with uh, Efren McLean. Efren McLean is one of the founders of information, the, the information systems discipline, one of the first uh, professors to teach information systems in the world. Uh, so he's, he's probably the most senior uh, professional in information systems. And, and he was, before being a professor in information systems, he was a practitioner in information systems, even before the, the, the discipline existed. In, in 1962, he helped Procter & Gamble, uh, well, this huge uh, uh, North American uh, company, to develop its first information systems uh, uh, to make sense of computers for business purposes. And I'm not talking about uh, using computers, for example, to simply uh, automate uh, the, the payroll of a company, but using information systems to help uh, Procter and Gamble become a let's say or, or provide its its uh, provide better value 
to the market. So I included this interview here. Uh, if you have uh, time, uh, just watch it afterwards. It's worth. And I told you that last year we, we, we had a different format for these uh, research seminars. Uh, so we, we basically every week we, we had an interview with a different researcher. We will have a few people coming here to talk to you about uh, different topics. Um, but uh, during this conference, but this time we are very focused in what we want is that each and every one of you uh, has develops over the semester, not develops um, or sketches a, a, a paper uh, that maybe you can submit to, to AMSIS, the America's Conference on Information Systems that will happen in Panama next year. So our challenge here is to have many more Latin Americans writing to this important uh, conference than we have uh, this day. So, so we changed the format because of that. So it's not uh, just uh, speeches of different researchers this time. Uh, it's most of the time it's going to be with me, but the, the idea is we will try and build on on your skills there to, to, to write uh, academic papers. But anyway, this is to, to explain why it was a different format. And, and, and by the way, you have a lot of uh, interviews or, or a lot of sp speeches uh, of people like Efraim McLean in the previous um, uh, years, uh, research seminars. And they are all, if you go there to topic one, I, I had included here the research seminars in information systems in 2021 and 2022. This, these are the, how they call the, it's not the channels, uh, the um, playlists, the playlists of uh, 2021 and 2020, where you can see people talking about research in information systems that could also give you ideas of interesting topics that you can relate to your own experience or to the, the topics that you teach in your classes or to a topic that uh, a professor uh, developed in, 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 you know, in a class and that you want to build on and you want to write an academic paper. Uh, so uh, it, it's, it's all there. Okay. Uh, so, all right. So uh, I was just mentioning here that there's this video and let's go back there to the, to those drawings. Uh, well, in the again in the the y axis here we have computer hardware and architecture the lower part, uh, then si system infrastructure, software development, uh, application technologies, and organizational systems issues. Right, and in the horizontal uh, well, the, the 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 x axis here we have to the left more theory and principles, and more to the right here application uh, deployment and so on and so forth. So look here when 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 they say what the activities of a computer CE is for computer engineer here, the computer engineer tends to be someone who works at a very low level, right? And that low level is not I mean it's not any um, judgment of value, right? Low level here simply because uh, the computer engineer works mainly with the hardware, with the uh, hardware and the infrastructure, right? So the, infra the, the 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 computer engineer is someone who works a lot with the machinery uh, straight and, and less with humans and the complexity of, uh, of uh, I mean, human relations in, a, in an organization. So, and then when we, we come here for the computer scientist, what's the difference? The, the computer scientist is usually not too concerned with the hardware, right? Computer scientist, of course, computer scientist needs hardware to, to deal with software, but com a computer scientist is more concerned with the software itself or the development of software. But it's very, the computer scientist is very focused on, well, very theoretical, because as if you ask a, a computer scientist why he's developing a specific uh, algorithm, uh, he or she is going to say, well, because I want to take a better, let's say, to make a better use of the possibilities of a specific hardware to do uh, uh, whatever mathematical, uh, um, calculation faster, for example. So they are, they're interested in creating, uh, um, well, developing uh, new uh, computing uh, knowledge for the sake of developing computing knowledge. They're not a, what we could call a, an area, uh, computer science is not interested with the rest of the world. They're, they're interested uh, with uh, computing for computing sake. Right? They want to make computing best, better than it was in the past. Uh, what it's going to be used for, it's someone else's problem. Okay. So notice that the, 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 the computer scientist is not here in this side where you see, uh, where, where, where we're talking about application deployment. They are not interested in, 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 in applications. Right? They, they are interested in the theory. 
uh, and they may even get to to well to, to some more uh, practical uh, concerns here when they're, they're already thinking about developing theory to allow for uh, the development of applications here right so of course this is more uh, applied to the to the to the right uh, and uh, but, but again when we get here to, to organizational issues this is also sort of a little more applied and now notice uh, what happens with the information systems guy. This guy, is whoever is in information systems, is not concerned about the hardware. In fact, the hardware is infrastructure. Uh, this is actually a, in fact, a reason why, um, what's his name, um, Nicholas Carr wrote in 2004 that paper that I think I mentioned in the previous class, IT doesn't matter, right? Uh, and when he mentions, uh, when he was referring to IT doesn't matter, he was he was talking about the IT that happens here, right? Uh, uh, at the, the hardware level and at the infrastructure level. And what he was saying was that, for example, uh, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're, uh, you know, um, it, it doesn't matter that you use, for example, computer networks, because everyone uses computer networks, and therefore, there is no strategic value in using computer networks. What everyone uses has no value. It's almost like saying that water has no value and uh, petrol is very valuable, right? Simply because there's much more water. Water is so uh, abundant. There's so much water in the, in the world that we don't value it. Uh, and this, this is probably the, the, the reason why we should value it because it may become um, less abundant and, and then I will pay very, very high prices for something that is obviously much more important for human life uh, but anyway, uh, notice that we are not interested with the, the, the infrastructure. This has to be working, uh, and, and it's this is one interesting thing about uh, Nicholas Carr's uh, work because he says it doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter, but it has to work, right? It doesn't matter if it's working because if it's not working, then if, if the infrastructure doesn't work, then the business doesn't happen, right? So it's it's a, it doesn't matter. A little different, it, of course, it matters. It matters a lot, but it doesn't provide you with a competitive edge. It will not provide you with a difference in the market. Okay. Uh, notice that there is uh, uh, some concern here with uh, with uh, applied software development and everything. Uh, and this is probably most of the guys who are in the computer science uh, or, or come from computer science schools and, and do research in information systems tend to be more like in this area here. But the organizational uh, uh, issues are what is the most important here. Again, uh, I know that many of you come directly from com com computer science schools or computer or, or even are called engineers or whatever. And then when I say that information systems doesn't care about the hardware, cares very little about the infrastructure and will only concern about the software on a very applied uh, sense and not, not concerned with it theoretically, you may be saying, well, but some of those skills that I developed in 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 my engineering professional uh, profession, then uh, do not help me develop good research in information systems. If, if that's the question, I would say, yeah, probably you're right. Uh, I don't think that there's much that I learned as an electronics engineer that helps me develop research in information systems because the electronics engineer is, is, is down here, right? Uh, and the research that I, I, I have to do these days is all over here. Um, but it's it's the way uh, the, the the area has defined itself. So again, when you start, and, and and our purpose for today is to start thinking about topics that interest information systems, and topics, it, and it, it can't be something that you think that should uh, um, interest information systems. Remember, there are gatekeepers in the middle of the way that will tell you, well, sorry, this is too. I mean, uh, you you became too technical here. You're talking about you you're, you're too interested in, in telling us. Uh, about the the theory related to the software that, you, the, that that you're using, and this is not information system. So, submit that to to a software engineering conference or to a submit it to, to to some other conference because it doesn't interest us, and we don't want that to happen, right? We want you to have your papers accepted at least by those who will appoint the reviewers, and that means keep it uh, up level. Uh, the, the the perspectives of information systems are always the perspective, I call it the perspective of the eagle. I, and again, when I want to empower my undergrads in information systems, I tell them, you are going to be like the eagle that flies over the forest. 
you see the whole forest, you can, uh, I mean, you understand the whole forest. Uh, your colleague, uh, who's, who's a computer engineer, is a, a monkey né, that is there sitting on one of the trees of the forest. And there's no one who, who knows that tree better than he does. But that tree is not the information systems forest. The information systems forest is, well, information systems is about the forest, not about the tree. The tree, you know, having the best tree or, or uh, is something that would concern the the computer engineer or even the computer scientist, depending if the, if building that tree or, or, or is a harder or softer issue, right? But uh, understanding the forest and 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 making uh, meaningful research that allows uh, the field to better understand the the whole system is what information systems is about or or, or wishes to be about. Okay, and then uh, I, I mean all, they they also have a profession here. Uh, what they call the IT professional, which is more like a, someone who, who will probably be working in support and in areas applied use of very, it's, it's very related to the applications and, and pretty much making sure that the organizations works. So it's maybe those guys who, who make sure that the infrastructure uh, works. Uh, they, are, they are all here, but they're, they're not developing the infrastructure the, the, the way that the computer engineers are. They're just making sure that that, that infrastructure uh, works here at an organizational level, right? Um, they include here the software engineer as being this guy who's related to, related to anything related to software, but the, uh, the the software engineer, and I see a lot of software engineers or people who, who study software engineering thinking, well, there is room for me in information systems. Uh, there is there is room for everyone because information systems is a like a, a mother that, uh, that uh, hosts uh, whoever's sons are, and daughters are lost, right? So there is room for someone who's a, 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 who's a researcher or has, let's say, a competences in, in, in software engineering to, to do research in information systems. But this person will have to, to think that whatever research he or she does in information systems will be around here, this, this side here of the, right? They, they, and they will probably have to try and use skills that they have here and try to push it up to the level of, uh, the organization, at least. No, notice that the uh, the uh, AIS and the a a a ACM were still very concerned with organizational issues. I already claim that we should have another layer here of social issues, uh, and I think that in the future there, there's going to be a lot of research developed by information systems researchers that is not concerned with organizations any longer. Well, mainly because after we automate, right, after uh, artificial intelligence takes over, uh, there will be no room for us in, in, in organizations either, right? Uh, everything will be decided by non-humans. Uh, so it's better that we find some other topic in which we are, we're still relevant. And I would say, well, if we think of, if, 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 we, if we have that ego's perspective, and, and if, we, if we look at how technology affects our society as a whole, we have, that, that's still a, a few, an area in which there's a lot to be done and information systems uh, professionals or, or researchers are well skilled to do that, and of course, then when they put all those, um, uh, sorry, the, all, all the the computer the computing areas together, one on top of the other, then we have the whole uh, the, the, this whole square here that is the the inter the, not the intersection the the union of all the different uh, uh, fields. Does that make sense to you? I remember that uh, I think uh, Josir had written something there, or. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's, he's saying that uh, if there is a his, his his question was if there is a similar graph for scientific fields. No, I don't. I don't think that there is. Uh, but again, and the reason why I brought these uh, uh, boxes here is that I think that they should guide us somehow in 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 the, in the way we we do our research. Simply because, again, uh, I have that very humble way of looking at. Um, researchers in, in academia and researchers in, in universities is that uh, we, we, are, we are actually developing research. We're not, we, we, may, we may even be able to solve the world's problems, but if we solve the problems of our, our own students, we are already doing at least our small task to make the world better, right? Uh, and how can we solve the, the problems of our students? Well, giving them perspective, showing them what, uh, if they're information systems uh, students, where they are, where they're going to, to have, have special skills or special powers uh, 
uh, than uh, other computing um, students will not have, and then where, where they should focus and where where they know that they, you know th that that's what makes them different, uh, different in, in the sense that makes them provides them with an edge uh, in in the market, uh, and as researchers, uh, basically what we have to do is is to focus. I mean, my, my my opinion, we have to focus in making sure that the research we do is in information systems. Uh, it's very easy for people with uh, a, a, with a, an academic background in, in computer science to become too um, connected to the monkey's view. They're, they're, they're too concerned with, uh, with, with, with building the, 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 the tree or, or with uh, um, reporting the tree and showing how the tree is when uh, information systems should be more, uh, import, uh, more concerned with the, the, the whole forest. Uh, and the same thing happens with business people with a business background that tends to be many times that they think that they're doing research in information systems, but uh, the, the research that they're doing is already a research in marketing, in operations management, in finance, in any other area. It, it's not simply because uh, your the object that of your research involves some technology that it becomes research in information systems, right? Uh, Information systems has, if you're, if you're researching information, uh, sorry, a technology from a business perspective, uh, you, you, you should uh, focus, you should not consider it as the, simply the object of your research. In fact, I think this is something we should reflect about. If, if, if I think that my research is information sim systems simply because it deals with, it deals with IT or with, with technology, maybe we should dig a, a little deeper uh, because, uh, because that's just the environment in which we're doing the research, right? Uh, that's just the object. I, I, I should say we should not mix up the object of our research, which means uh, what we decided to study and, uh, and the objective of the research, which is the goal we have to develop that research. Okay. All right. I, I, again, I, 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 well, the, in our first meeting last week, I, I told you that we would have some, some time to present ourselves to give the others a perspective of, of how we are looking at the, the problems of information systems uh, here. And last, last uh, in, the, in our previous meeting, we ended up not having time for, uh, to do that. But uh, I would like to do that today. It's I think it's important that you get to, well, this guy, this other guys in the screen here uh, are going to be, you know, the, the reviewers of the work that you'll be doing uh, during the semester. We. Uh, it's going to be fast. The idea is that until the end of the semester, each one of us, or during the semester, will be working on developing our, our let's say, some draft of a research paper. And uh, as we don't have other reviewers, let's say our gatekeepers are going to be our colleagues here, right? Uh, in the sense that uh, we'll, whenever we already have some, some material that we can share with, with our friends, we will swap, we'll, we'll exchange with our colleagues and it's important that we start to, to know that we will do that uh, differently to what happens in academia. We will do that in a, it's not going to be double blind, it's going to be open. Uh, we may even uh, choose, uh, if we, uh, we'll have to decide how to do that, but we may even choose who we want to read what we're doing, depending a, a bit on their perspective as well. Considering that each one of us has a, a different perspective here, depending on where we come from originally. Oh, sorry, I messed up here with, uh, I wanted to show the, the again the, the, all those drawings uh but sometimes if you're if you're from a business school you should uh, get someone from a a computer science school read your paper and criticize it because there are things that you think that are absolutely clear and that they will say what is that and that means well this is something that we'll have to deal uh, in your in your paper because other maybe the, the other the other reviewer that you ha you will have at the conference for example may have the same sort of question so my idea here was to, to, to have the, I mean, we still have some, some 20, 20, 30 minutes there. I'd like to, all of those uh, of you who, who have the, well, who have a, uh, it would be good if I could see, if we could see you, but uh, even if we can't see you, at least if, you, if we can hear you, uh, I want to, each one of you to say, well, again, why, why, why what, what you're studying right now, what your what, what you think about where you want to to go with this uh, seminar? What is your background in the sense of uh, well, this is these are I usually say these are the lenses that I put in front of my eyes to to see the world, uh, so that we start knowing each other, right? And um, 
Well, maybe I'll start with this. My, my first guinea pigs are the ones that I already have their cameras open here. Marina, could you could you start and just present yourself to the group and 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 by the way, you can do that in 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 your own language if you wish, right? Whoever uh, you can do it. Just remember, if you're going to speak in Portuguese or or Spanish, you have to go slow because many of the others will have to figure out what you're saying. Okay, Marina. Okay, hi everyone. I will try to speak in English. Perfect. Because it's been a long time that I I couldn't practice, so I try and I'm sorry if I make some mistakes, <laughs> but it's because I I'm not um, very oh my gosh I forgot the word oh, okay <laughs> very what so, you say it in Portuguese because the ones who speak Spanish will probably understand it also <laughs> very so I I today I'm doing my PhD at Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, in business uh, or management, and uh, I am researching some uh, information system topics that I uh, I thought I was researching information system, <laughs> but now with the question of the professor Alexander, I kept myself thinking. Oh, one thing I have to tell you again, it's it, it, a lot. A lot of what I, I say here, take some of it is just my perception, right? So. <laughs> Take it with filters as well, right? Uh, uh, and again, and, and be clear that my filters are from someone who is in a. I teach in a in applied computing uh, program and I teach in a business program, but my, my studies were mainly from a business perspective. So I, I tend to see more like AIS, right, than others. And, and there's a lot of uh, opportunities for information systems from a very computer science oriented view, but I think you will do better. Uh, my, pers my, my, my idea is you will. You'll be more relevant in your research if you can make it more upper level. But go go on, Marina. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, so my my interests are to investigate the the risks that exist between information systems and the people who use it. So we are trying to associate the socio materiality perspective into my research, and to, including today I'm. I'm answering my essays questions. Pardon, you're answering what? My essays questions from my thesis. We sent them to the essay. Essay questions? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh huh. part of my qualification for my final work. Okay, I have to let me explain that. In some universities in Brazil, for their PhDs, uh, they, they do it in steps. They first they have an essay. They write an essay. By the way, essay is the topic that we will discuss next class. It's one of the the it, it's one of the, the, the types of, of, of um, papers that we can write. Uh, I, I have already included I included there an essay that I wrote with uh, Professor Eusebio Scornavaca, who's another Brazilian professor in the United States. Uh, and uh, I can tell you, uh, and I included that because I want you to, to try and see if there are any any patterns in, in essay writing, right? Uh, so, uh, very, but, but let, let me very quickly show show you that uh, during. Uh, we'll go back to my to you, Marina. Okay, don't worry. Let me just show you here. Advertise what we'll be doing next week. This is this is it here. It's uh, uh, essay writing. Uh, so in the class we will discuss the essay as one of the forms of academic writing. It's one of the easiest forms of writing, my opinion, but maybe one of the riskiest, also my opinion. Okay, uh, and I will not explain you why it's risky today. I will uh, li uh, leave that for next week. Uh, uh, but I can tell you that it's uh, uh, it's very difficult for someone to get published when you write essays. Although it's it's easy because uh, uh, well an essay doesn't even require um, that you go to the fields, it doesn't have any empirical work there, right? So we'll be doing this, and your task for next week is going to be reading uh, this paper by me and, and Professor Eusebio Cornavaca. There's no date here because this is an unpublished paper. It's on digital transformation. Uh, and uh, so you'll be doing that. You will read this essay, and you will try and look on the web or wherever uh, what an essay is about and and, and, and be prepared for, for us to discuss uh, that. Okay, so essay is, is our first, uh, uh, let's say it's going to be the first type of, of paper. By the way, I already tell you that I don't expect any of you writing an essay during this this uh, semester, right? I hope that you don't because again, I said it's risky. Uh, it's very difficult to be published when you write an essay. We'll explain why 
next week. Okay, go back back to you, Marina. Yes, yeah, so I'm expecting to, to write a paper about the my and um, yeah, uh, write a paper about my my first Your work. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm talking to my my <laughs> your advisor, your advisor, your advisor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's probably not going to be the essay, right? And again, what I was, what, what I was going, uh, yeah, what I was explaining here, uh, uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little hypertextual in my thinking, so sometimes you have to figure out well, where, where, where does Alexander want to go back to, right? Or, or will he ever go back to? And sometimes I don't. But what I was saying is that many Brazilian uh, universities uh, students, when when they're taking their PhD, they write an essay about a topic. And then they, they, and after that, they write the project of their dissertation, and then they write their, their dissertation, right? Uh, I will, uh, ne next class, uh, I will tell you, Marina, why I, I think that we do wrong by doing that. I don't think that the essay should be the first thing that we write. In fact, my, cl my claim is that the essay should be the last paper we write in our academic lives, not the first. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's one way that universities do, and many times I think that they do because it's easy to write. It's difficult to publish, but it's easy to to, to, to write. And uh, maybe we can even take uh, Marina's uh, example next week on. Okay, uh, Elena? Hi. <laughs> I'm a mantris. Uh, I'm, my son is doing some noise. So uh, we, we've already seen him around. He's, he's very active in, the, in our class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a master's student at uh, Federal University of Uberlândia and my research uh, topic is intelligence artificial. Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence? And, huh? Yes, and Agenda 2030. Uh -huh. okay. SDGs. Okay, this, uh, are, are, is, is everyone familiar with this uh, 2020 agenda? It's a, a United Nations thing, right? Uh, 230, right? Or 2020? Yes, yes. 2030. Yes. SDGs. Okay. Sustainable, sustainable development. development uh, yeah, sustainable development goals. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, and again, uh, th this is uh, well. W when you see someone with my perspective, you'll see that it's a little challenging to to think that uh, uh, artificial intelligence will lead us there, right? Yeah. Because I'm already questioning. Uh, I question the, the the way we use technologies. Always asking that. That question: Why are we doing that? Uh, you know, how how do we become? Be, how do we humans become more humane? And and therefore, and I think that all those when, when the United Nations is thinking about uh, this this sustainable uh, development goals and everything, they're thinking about sustainable development for the humans, right? Not for our technologies. Yes. Uh, yes. But anyway, it's it's good. You will see. And you are in a computer science school, right? Yes. So notice we. No. we no, no, no. I'm at uh, business. Oh, business. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. So, well, you know why I thought it was computer science? Because of, yeah, of the, yeah. the emphasis on the technology. But again, yeah. uh, this is also important to show that even, I'm, I mean, we humans, we are very, we humans, we, we love our technologies. You know, we love our technologies. And, and, and this makes uh, it so that, uh, you know, um, uh, well, of course, computer scientists love the technology that they develop. Uh, and, co and computer engineers, and then uh, information systems people are always, gee, we have this new technology, now we have to find a purpose for it. We, do, we don't have a purpose, but we, you know, uh, and society in general, we are all very enthusiastic about techno our technology. So one thing that I, 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 I could tell you, uh, tell you for, for my, uh, and again, it's not my, even my, it's, it's how I think that we can become more relevant in the future is being always a little critical about this tendency that we have to think that our technology is always leading us to a better world, uh, because uh, it may not. Uh, and I think we are the first generation that is, that is capable of at least start sus suspecting that this happens. All right. But anyway, yes. OK, thank you. Thank you, Elena. Uh, Roger, you have your, your open camera. Okay, slow, slow then, slow. <laughs> Slow. Despacio, devagar. Devagar, também devagar. Meu nome é Rogério, estudante de mestrado. É, professor Alexandre é meu orientador. Estamos aí trabalhando aí com inteligência coletiva, gestão do conhecimento. Estamos ainda em fase de discussão do tema. É, minha formação é gestão ambiental e gestão de pessoas. Tá? 
a ideia da pesquisa né, do mestrado é trabalhar sobre o aspecto da gestão do conhecimento. Então, como os, os sistemas de informação, como a inteligência coletiva é, tem impactado aí na gestão do conhecimento. Okay. Ainda não delimitamos ainda a pesquisa, então por isso que estou fazendo aí a matéria que acredito que vai ser importante né, no desenvolvimento aí do, da pesquisa. Okay, thank you, Rogério. Well, now, now I have only the people that do not have their cameras open, so whoever wants to open their mic. I don't know what happens with my camera because uh, at first I can connect, but I cannot connect anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> worries. <what> you saw <laughs> me. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I am a doctoral student, and I'm working on the... I was listening to what you were saying, Alex, and... Um, It's true, this, uh, this worry that I have, maybe because I'm from another generation, and uh, I see how the new, gener the, the new generation evolves to be um, unhumanized, <laughs> It, developing and uh, human technology. Mm. And uh, that got me worried. And uh, uh, what I'm working on is to, to measure or to try to see How can we prepare the people to adapt, to adopt, and to make this adoption less stressing for them? Mm -hmm. That's um, what I'm working on. And um, this goes in several levels. The first level is with the IT people. The IT people also have a stress because every time um, uh, the technology changes, they have a stress in keeping up with new technologies because maybe the administration mm -hmm. want, to, want to, to go with the same um, um, velocity as the other competition and they force the IT people to, to, to um, upgrade things mm -hmm. and maybe they don't know and the problem is that you might have in between the, 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 the IT people those that are in favor and those that don't want to change and mm -hmm. keep their own way of doing things. And then the next level is the users, the users that um, have to adapt and adopt everything, all these ups, mm. uh, these technologies, and who is worried of what they feel and how it costs them to, to, um, to use this technology and be productive with this technology. Mm -hmm. That is a very huge issue. Perfect. Uh, uh, okay, Donna. Yeah, this this uh, the challenge of adoption and adoption ac acceptance, adoption, appropriation of technology is this is something that we've been discussing for 20 years and probably we'll still have to discuss for the next 20 years uh, to, more. to yeah to, to get closer to uh, uh, an understanding. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, what, what is Patricia saying there, Patricia? Let me, let me, let me, Uh, my name is Patricia and today uh, is my first class. I'm a doctoral student, recently joined the P PPGI at UFPR. Okay, good, good, Patricia. Do you have a mic, Patricia? If you have a mic, you can just say yes, hello. Yes, All right. hello, so, hello. So, so, so go, go ahead, tell, uh, yeah, your, 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 Tayani is adv uh, uh, advising you. Tayani is, was the organizer of, of our Isla conference this year. Uh, it's good to, 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 can you tell us a little bit about what you plan to do, Patricia, in, 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 your, in your research in general? pesquisa, eu vou falar em português, okay, mas slowly. eu sou mais segura. But slow. Slow because okay. Others... Okay. Uh, eu sou aluna recém-entrada no doutorado, uh -huh. né, no PPGI. Uh, a professora Tayane uh, indicou eu participar dessa turma, então é uma honra para mim estar aqui. Mas como ouvinte, professor, porque acho que eu tenho muito a aprender aqui né, e compartilhar com os colegas, a minha pesquisa, na realidade, até vou ter a primeira conversa com a professora Tayane nessa quinta-feira, para nós podermos alinhar o pré-projeto, mas nós começamos, o meu pré-projeto foi em cima de Smart Campus e processos avaliativos, um olhar sobre ensino superior em Curitiba. Smart Campus, Smart Campus is, uh, you're, you're thinking about what happens in a smart city and you're, you're converting that to the campus of a university. Uh -huh. Sim, eu sou professora universitária uh -huh. há 20 anos. Uh -huh. Uh, então, eu, eu procurei, assim, pensar um pouquinho também nesse ambiente acadêmico, onde eu estou inserida e dentro das atividades que eu desenvolvo, né? Uhum. E o interesse que eu tenho por esse tema. 
Perfect. Okay. Uh, what uh, Patricia just said, she, 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 uh, oh, she's a listener. Nobody is a listener here. Everyone is a participant. Okay. Uh, you will have to participate. Uh, and uh, it's important, even it's important for us, for example, for, well, for, for LACAIS, the Latin American and, and Caribbean Association for Information Systems, it's important for us to have as, as many people taking these uh, seminars as possible. Uh, and, uh, and, and of course, it's also important, impo uh, important for my university, you know. So this is why I asked you to enroll yourself to, to, to fill in that, that, that form. I think you have already, because you will be listened, uh, you, you all be listed as uh, uh, well, students in this, let's say, in this class. Of course, some of you, I know, Antonio is a professor, Donna, Donna is, uh, well, Donna may, may, and may, and many, many people may not even need credits, but you'll still be enrolled. Uh, so that we can even so, so that we can tell look with all, all these people are doing this thing it's not it's not uh you know so there's no there's no listener everyone participates here. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you one thing you think that you're speaking slowly and these guys, our, our colleagues that are Spanish speaking, they don't understand you, right? <laughs> so you have to be really slow. Antonio, Antonio, your turn. All right, but um, uh, what my name is Antonio, um, I'm teaching operating systems and the University of Panama. Operating systems. Yeah, so so this this is this is definitely a a, a computer scientist here in, among us. More specific, and I have an undergrade title of the PhD from the University of Alicante in Spain, mm -hmm. and actually um, I have uh, different lines or different uh, divisions, operations in, in research with other people to work in this specific area. For example, networking. And more, it's my, it's my specific topic for research and actuality and uh, publishing in this area, mm -hmm. specifically in networking. Mm -hmm. The question is because I am here in this, uh, in this uh, scenario, the information system is uh, very, very different relationships with other science or field of science. And interesting in this uh, information system is to uh, learn to relationship with this information system of networking or different areas. For example, um, uh, how to how to to, to sp uh, split the uh, different things in, in networking. For example, mm -hmm. in, in my research in PhD. Um, Tutor and me and others, people we are in mix of different areas, biologies, uh, medicine, uh, uh, networking, uh, uh, etc. Um, it's it's uh, I feel so very interesting, but uh, actually my interest is uh, to, to to learn to mix mm -hmm. other fields and prepare uh, papers in this area. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You know, Antonio, uh, information systems being uh, a field that I call, uh, it, it's not a, a mean field, mean field that, that is in the, uh, uh, that, that it, it's a field that is there so that other fields uh, uh, can uh, exist. For example, I consider information uh, or, or computer science, computer science, of course, it's, 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 it's a science in itself. Uh, but the, the, the computer scientist, for example, someone who's teaching uh, operational systems, uh, I understand that you're teaching people how to develop an oper uh, operational system, right? It's very technical. Uh, uh, and so it's very much that view that I call the, the monkey view. You're, you're building the tree. And, and the information systems wants to, well, let's see all the trees that, are, that exist in, the, in this forest and see how we connect now the, the information system with, with, with so, so information systems see all the other, uh, these other areas as, as legal blocks that you can connect to to create value uh, in the past it was to create value for organizations the point, the point is, uh, to start to yeah. start the yeah. essential of these uh, different topics yeah. and to incorporate yeah, exactly because because uh, usually what happens is that your area is so complex in in, in the, the in the detail the details it has 
that uh, most researchers will be very focused in, in looking at that little part, at, at that tree. Uh, and then we say, okay, now we need people that get Antonio's work and, and someone else's work and, and makes a sense of the whole. So information systems is to make a sense of the whole. Uh, but it's at the same time, I think it's, it's a beautiful field for whoever is, is very focused on, uh, on something that is very detailed and specific to understand how does that thing that I do, how does that uh, um, connect to something that is much larger, right? Uh, and, and there's a lot of room for, for people uh, that can help build this connection. And I think this connection needs, I mean, it needs the ego flying over the, the forest and trying to understand what you do, but it also needs that some of the, the, the monkeys and, 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 and sorry, <laughs> uh, uh, say, we do this here and this is this could be important to solve a, a company's problem or this could is important to uh, help humans become uh, happier or whatever uh, in the future. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's important that we also have uh, the areas connected to information systems. So thank you very much for being here with us and, and hopefully you will be now a researcher in, in computer science and in information systems as well because we will pull you this way. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Flavio? Hello, teacher. Hi. Hi, guys. My name is Flavio and I'm a student at the Institute Militar Engenharia in Rio de Janeiro. And my research is involved in four topics. Uh, natural language processing, flash machine learning, foundation ontology, semantic interoperability, and more uh, important for me, command control. And my, my end, um, and folks in, in exchanging uh, information and uh, between two points. Um, um, and I try to use uh, uh, natural language processing to optimize uh, communication between and between two points. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Flavio, uh, just to, first to make sure, natural language processing uh, is, if we, if we think about the object of what Flavio is doing, you could say, well, this is, uh, uh, this could be in the, uh, uh, could, could still be software engineering, this could be uh, computer uh, science. Uh, what will make uh, Flavio's work information systems is the connection that Flavio is able to, to do to show how, uh, you know, this uh, development of, uh, uh, of the understanding of natural languages by computers, how that will relate to what organizations, what companies do, or, or how can that relate to the ways we as humans uh, relate. So, uh, Flavio, uh, one thing that you have to be careful if you want to be published in information systems, uh, there is some of the work that you're doing that is probably very interesting for computer scientists or, or and, and 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 there's and maybe the same work depending on how you you present it is interesting to information systems right sometimes it's the same story told to different audiences but using a different language uh this is something uh, well flavio was uh, an author in, in the information systems uh, in latin america conference recently so it means that he has already learned uh what the information systems, uh, uh, let's say, researchers uh, are concerned about. But let's, uh, we just have to make, make that very clear, uh, Flavio, in your work, to make sure that the gatekeepers are not going to say, well, look, what you're doing here is too technical, too technical in the sense, too much computing and too little um, uh, uh, interaction with, the, with, 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 uh, with organizations or with society or whatever to be of interest to information systems. You, you have to always think of that to make sure that you're, you, you know what to say to each uh, audience, all right? Correct. Uh -huh. Good, thank you. Uh, Elvira? Hi, nice to meet you, everyone. I am Elvira from Panama. Uh, I will start my PhD the next September mm -hmm. in industrial engineering. 
that is my undergraduate program related. Uh, uh, but I will focus on safety science uh, and a specific how it is the new way to design the information system in the company affect the safety. Mm -hmm. At this moment, I am working with the municipalities in Panama, helping them with the way that they design the risk management system. Mm -hmm. Focus in information system. Okay. For this reason, I found interest in this course. And also, Alex, I, w I was late for this class, and I would like to have access to the to the paper that you, are, that you was presenting to mm -hmm. review a little bit and read that carefully. Uh, and thank you, everyone, um, for, this, uh, for designing this course. Thank you, Donna, for inviting me. Uh, and everything that I can help, I I am here for help. Right, Invira, Invira I have uh, uh, sorry, Invira, I have already included a link there in the chat that takes you to the Moodle to to to, to my to, to the, the screens that I was showing to you, right? Uh, and uh, oh, yeah. it, uh, it I think it, it will. Well, you have to to. I don't know if anyone else has the same problem as as Invira that still do not have access to my to to, to the course here at, at Moodle. Uh, if you do take this link. Uh, you will probably have to make a registration first there. It will ask some data to, to register you in, in, in the, the university's platform. Uh, and then uh, it will also ask for, a, for an access code to the course itself. And the access code is 123456. Is that it, people? I remember it was something like that. For those who, who have already okay. reached, yeah, I, I think it's that. If you have any any, any problem, and, and you will see that we included there, there it's not only the, the Moodle, we have the, 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 the Moodle here, but we also have, uh, well, of course, the, the links for, for, for Google Meet is always the same, so you don't have to worry, but we also have a WhatsApp group uh, that, again, it's only, only for, I mean, we're not going to be saying hello and goodbye uh, every day on, 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 on the WhatsApp group. It's, it's only for important uh, messages. Sometimes I will call you, you know, a few minutes before we start here, just to remind you uh, that, our, that, that our Monday is already starting uh, and so on and so forth. But uh, make sure that you all have access to, to Moodle because it's in, the, the, it's in Moodle that we'll have all the, the material for, for all the classes. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, who, who else uh, hasn't talked yet? Maybe... Uh, Christian, can you can you open your mic? How? I think it's Christian. Yeah. Good morning. Morning. Uh, my name is Christian Murillo. I'm from Panama, University of Panama. I'm a mechatronic in engineer. I currently work at a maintenance company for wet fire protection system, Ashivac, drinking water system. And my interest in, in this seminar is to apply it to the interpretation of system and process. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Christian is uh, so so. Christian would be a computer engineer, right? Uh, most probably in those drawings that we made, uh, he would relate better to what computer engineers do. Uh, but uh, again, information systems is very inclusive. We are in the middle of the way between all those other computer uh, computing related. Uh, fields and the application by our, our organizations or our society. So that's that's where you have uh, room to, to discuss your projects, Christian. Good. Great. All right. Uh, who else? Uh, I think uh, Marisa and Fabiola have not said anything yet, right? Marisa. Hi, teacher. Hi. <laughs> I, I try and test my, my, my English because I don't speak English long time <laughs> but you know one thing uh, this is this this is good this is the place for you to practice and yeah. again you don't you don't know how difficult it is to, for the well for the brazilians to uh, for the brazilians to understand the spanish speaking colleagues and vice versa so whenever you can i know that some of you still feel that you you're, you're not to to you, you still don't want to do it i prefer that you speak in portuguese or spanish then then you don't speak at all right uh, but let's yeah. try whenever you can try english first if it doesn't go then <laughs> Let me switch. Okay, I don't remember uh, the word I, I speak in Portuguese. <laughs> uh, oh, I started in, in the university in the uh, in, in the in the initial one, right? the Yeah, at the year. beginning of the year. Uh -huh. Beginning of the year, uh, I studied in master degree in administration administration, mm -hmm. but my uh, my 
formação, né? Ah. I am a, bar, uh, a bachelor. Uh -huh. an accountant. My okay. My accountant. Account. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, I, uh, my, my guide uh, teacher is Marcio. Marcio. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't have uh, opportunity to talk uh, with him because I, I started one classes uh, with teacher Marcio in the in the in the next week mm -hmm. I'm okay. talking. All right. Uh, my my theme is about uh, the robot process automation uh, uh, the change change the the woman the woman workforce mm -hmm. uh, for the two softer workforce. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Good. Uh, but I I student uh, more about this theme. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah, no. The idea here is that we will use this, and, and uh, Elena was asking if uh, the paper. As, as I told you, we will. The idea is that everyone here will write a paper during the semester, or maybe if you already have something that you started before, you will submit, and we will use. We will try to make sure that the colleagues here work as if they were the reviewers, and uh, you can write on your own. You can write with a colleague. Uh, I, I I like the idea of having you as reviewers because then I will send you the sort of uh, forms the, the, uh, that usually reviewers have in their hands when they're reviewing papers. And then you will get the kinds of questions that reviewers are asked. For example, they're asked, is the objective of the, of the paper clear enough? And then they will go there at the paper and say, well, the, the objective was never expressed. And then they're going to say, no, this is a problem. When, in fact, uh, I mean, you, I don't think that you, if, if you write a good paper, Maybe you don't have to state that the objective of this paper is to do this for, 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 the, for the objective to be clear. But still, if you're going to have a reviewer that after having read all your paper will say, oh, let me check that. And he goes there and looks on the, you know, he, he, he searches for the word objective in your paper and he doesn't find it. And then he says, and then he looks again at the paper and says, I can't see the, the and, and then he will write to you, well, the paper is good, but... And when we start having several buts, but the objective is not clear, but this and that, you lose your competitiveness against some other author who, whose paper was exactly the way that the, the reviewer uh, could expect. But that's something that we will learn uh, to do, right? Uh, we have to be a little, um, how to say, uh, a little, uh, well, the, the word in English maybe would be a little naughty, a little, uh, we have to, uh, in, in Portuguese, uh, the Spanish guys will not understand how we, we malandro. Uh, in Portuguese, uh, uh, we we have to know how the how we're going to be reviewed to make sure that we answer those questions before they're asked, uh, and then nobody is going to be able to to complain about something. And we will learn to do that. But again, answering Elena and whoever uh, else needs, it's I mean, you will write. Uh, maybe you can write with a colleague here. You, uh, it's just uh, the way in which we will um, structure. And it will, it will take two or three uh, meetings before we start doing that, uh, because we still have a lot to say here. Uh, but then we'll, we'll work on that, and, and, and then we'll start building the papers. And by the end of November or beginning of December, we'll hopefully we'll have at least a draft, right? the original draft, that is something that you can work on later on. And, okay? and we're still missing um, who? Fabiola. I don't know if she has a... Well, I don't know if Fabiola is there, but anyway, uh, I think it's getting a little late. Our idea is never to go too too much beyond half the, the hour. Uh, so, um, everyone okay with what we have to do for next week? Basically, read the digital transformation paper that I wrote with Professor Eusebio Scornavaca. Uh, it's again going to deal with a topic that is a, a, a a topic of information systems. It's digital transformation. Uh, it will re it reviews uh, a lot of the work that has been done over the last 20 years or so about the topic. But our main interest is to try and see if there is a structure in an essay uh, so that if you had to mimic that, if you had to copy the way we wrote this paper, if that would, if it would be easy to find a structure, right? And at the same time, uh, you have to do something in parallel. That is, try and look on the web, try to research for what is an essay, an academic essay, uh, what are there parts that it should have and everything so that we can discuss. Okay, so this is our homework for next week. All right, so see you, see you then. Bye, guys.
Ciao. Ciao.